Hey, uh, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm happy to teach you some more PowerShell today. Uh, so today I thought we would talk about um, how to discover commands within PowerShell. Uh, if you've done any self-studying, uh, which if you're watching this video I'm sure you have, you may have come across a statement that Jeffrey Snover may have uh, mentioned at one point. Uh, he says there's only really three commands you have to memorize within PowerShell. Uh, that's git help, uh, git member, and git command. If you know those three, uh, you can write just about any PowerShell script you want. Um, and when you're out there, you kind of see how these commands work. Um, but today we're going to take those three commands and we're going to ball them up into um, solving a, a, a real world problem. And the real world problem is, um, I had a gentleman reach out on Facebook this week who had a problem where he needed, he was parsing a text document and he was trying to pull data from one line based on the information of data in a second, in a, in a, in a different line, essentially. Uh, he said he's been working on this problem for months, uh, trying to save himself some time. Well, I took these three, uh, commands uh, that we just mentioned earlier and I used those and I was able to get him uh, create him a little script within within just a couple hours of studying and, and playing with the data and all this uh, so we're going to use those three uh, today to do the exact same thing and these same techniques can also be used um, for uh, data analysis so I also had another gentleman reach out he's like hey do you think we could use PowerShell to, for data analysis and then he referred me to uh, another YouTube channel uh, by the name of, by a gentleman by the name of Trevor um, Sullivan who actually already has a video on how to do this such thing however he's using a JSON file which is already uh, structured data uh, which is fairly easy we're just going to take it a step further and we're going to use kind of unstructured data Everything is in line. It's just, it's not a JSON. It's not XML. It's just a straight text document is what we're going to do today. So with that being said, let's get to it. <clears throat> so what I did is I do, I'm not using the same uh, data that the gentleman gave me the other day. It's, I don't know where the data originated from. I don't know if it's sensitive to his environment. So what I did is I went ahead and I ran an nmap scan in my network. Um, and we're going to use that as our, as our data. And here's kind of what, what it looks like. So here it is. So here's the command that I ran. As I initiated the scan uh, just a few days ago, I used nmap. Here's all the switches. And here's all the ports I was looking for. Right? And this is kind of funny because I was just kind of going through here and listing ports. And I re didn't realize at the time that I listed port 25 twice. So right up here it says, warning, are you sure you're smart enough to use this tool? Well, maybe there's something to be said there. But if we scroll down here, um, we start kind of going through some of this data. And what we're going to look at first, right? Uh, the first thing we're going to walk through the data and we're going to try and pull out all these warnings. Where is it at? Somewhere down here, it'll start saying there's some warnings where uh, some resets were sent back and it's asking, is the port really open? Um, so it gives you something to kind of go look at just to double check. And we will see that. If we don't see it scrolling through here. We'll see it here in a minute. Uh, all right. We'll just look at it here in a minute. Because we're about to get get all that good information. So, like I said, there was the three three commands, you know, get help, get member, and get command. So let's so let's take a look at our text document. Oh. And uh, just to uh, show you what I'm doing is I am on a Linux machine. I'm on a uh, CentOS 8 box. I'm um, kind of just SSH'd into it. We can, if I do, uh, so, uh, what is it, uname, uh, see it says I'm on Linux. 
So if I can do a PWSH, I just currently upgraded to uh, CPS version table version PS version. That's what it is. Uh, you can see that I've uh, actually upgraded to the the new release of 7.1.1. Uh, I have not tried to jump over to 7.2 just yet. I haven't tested it out. So that is where I'm at. And I am on Linux. So if we do a dollar uh, is Linux, it'll come back as true. Dollar is Windows false. All right. So this is just to show that these techniques can be used on both Linux and Windows and Mac because it's based on the PowerShell version that you're using, not um, not the underlying operating system. So what we're going to do is we're going to get. So if you're a Linux person, uh, you know you can do uh, cat and then and map and map. All right. So here here's all the the data, just kind of like what we we're seeing in in the text document a minute ago. So what is cat? Cat is actually an alias. Um, um, okay, let's do. Uh, Here's a good uh, get command cat. As you can see, well, since I'm on a Linux machine, it's an actual application. So it, you know, PowerShell uses uh, the underlying applications as well. Had we been doing this on a Windows machine, it would have been an alias for uh, get content, which leads me into if we wanted to, if we didn't know. If we didn't know exactly how to read that document, how do we go about doing this? Well, just remember, there's the three commands you have to memorize. Git command, uh, git member, and git help. So we know we need a command. Um, and we want that command to do something with this text document. So we could, uh, let's see, git command... Do we have any, if we do a star, means anything before what's about to come next. Um, let's do, because we want to read the document, right? So let's do a read, let's see what we get, and then star. So I don't care what comes before it, and I don't care what comes after it, as long as it has the word read in it. And we do. We have some uh, PS read lines, read host. Um nothing really saying anything about the document so let's do uh, the same thing but let's take out read and let's do document ah nothing all right so we don't have read we don't have document what other terms could we possibly use to get the content out of this document oh there we go content let's see if we got anything with content get command content there we go here we go we'll see I don't feel like we're gonna add anything to the document because we're trying to pull information out of it we don't want to clear the content because that'll seems like it would wipe everything out get content seems pretty reasonable because we're trying to get information out of it and we're not trying to change anything in there so I don't want to set anything so let's just try get content so now we've got us a command so what can get content get us? Well, let's run it through get help. Get tech help, get tech content. And here we go. Let's see. It says uh, it gets the content of an item at the specified location. All right, so it requires a path. Uh, we can give it a recount. Okay, description. Gets the content of an item. That sounds exactly what we, like what we want. Came out in PowerShell 3. All right, so if you've ran this command and you didn't get the help um, output like I have, you may need to run uh, um, update-help uh, and, and update your help file. Uh, the first time I ran through this, uh, my help file was not there, and that's what I had to do. Um, and down here, we can see there's other things we can do. So we just kind of got a little synopsis, a little snapshot of what this can do. If we wanted, 
we could use the dash examples. And to be quite honest with you, when I was first uh, learning PowerShell myself, um, dash examples I used quite often because you a lot of the times you can um, use uh, use the same command with uh, get examples and it'll give you the command it'll almost give you the command that you're looking for right so I built a lot of my early day PowerShell scripts based off the dash examples uh, and then detailed will get you uh, some detailed information and the full will show you the whole help file uh, later on uh, when we start looking at some other things I'm going to show you some other parameters that aren't listed here uh, that you can help that you can use to help you get through uh, some of the stuff that you don't want to read through all right so so I think we just need to uh, get uh, content here let me let me raise this up so you guys can see it all right get con contents and we're going to read the nmap file so here we go that did it so let's see uh, what so the next thing you need to know once you are able to read this stuff uh, and you start playing with uh, your your scripts it's always a good idea to figure out what what type of object are you working with since PowerShell is an object oriented um, language you really need to know what type of object you're messing with so you know what type of properties it has what um, what type of methods does it have and things like that that way you know how to manipulate that particular object the easiest way to do that is using get member right this is this is the second um, the second command you're supposed to memorize is get member so uh, we're gonna get the content and we're gonna get the member and as you can see we've got a length properties we've got characters read content so paths ps drives child and then we have methods so these are different things we can do with this object so because i've done this for a while just looking at this i can almost i can almost tell you that it's a string object but to be sure we can scroll all the way to the top and we'll see this type name we'll see that it's in the namespace system and that it is in fact a string so with strings you have all these methods uh, things you can do we can get the type we can pad left pad right we can split it which comes in quite handy when you're parsing um, data right um, we can grab substrings uh, we can uh, yeah we can set it all to uppercase we can trim the ending uh, the beginning things like that so now that we know we're playing with a string all right so now that we know that we're messing with a string what we're going to try and do remember earlier i mentioned we're going to grab well i didn't mention it yet i was trying to find all of the warnings that had the uh, resets and that were asking if uh if the ports were really open so in order to do that we need to read in the content and then we're going to grab some text which is a string so now let's go ahead and, and see if we can't find a command with something about strings so get tack command and we're going to do star string star okay so we can convert our stuff from a secure string uh, or string data uh, we convert to a secure string join we can do an out string which if you've if you've done any research and you've played with some of these these are more of your outputs uh, how things are going to be outputted to the screen or to a text text document or things like that uh, we're not worried about these applications because those are generally OS specific things we're trying to stay within PowerShell to do all this so the only thing we have left is the select string okay so now we've got a command so the next thing we do is get tack help select tack string all right so up here it says uh it finds text in the string files that's exactly what we're looking for um it requires a pattern 
uh, it does, has all matches. Uh, context is going to be a big one that we're going to mess with later. Uh, probably on the second go around. Uh, right now we're just going to grab a simple a line out of the text document is all we're doing. Alright, and then some more help. Some other additional things you can read on. Alright, so select string pattern seems like is what we need to do. And I'm sure the question is going to be, well, how do you know that pattern is required? Because the easiest way is for it to tell you. Uh, but when uh, but when you're actually reading the help file, uh, there's little things you can look at uh, that'll that'll tell you if it's uh, mandatory or or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to get content again, and then we're going to select string tag string. And here's what I mean: if we were to hit enter right here, see how it's saying pattern uh, zero? That means it requires the pattern match. And so what we were looking for was a uh, warning and then we're not matching a second pattern so we're just going to hit enter and I got a whole bunch of output uh, the input object and to be bound parameters either because the command does not take pipeline or okay so let's let's try something else if you were to go read the help file and select just the parameters the pattern does not accept pipeline so let's try something else let's do dash pattern and we're gonna do uh, warning it does end in a colon so we'll close that up and there we go that's actually what I was trying to get to so in if we were to go read our text document this is what I was looking for warning reset from this IP on port 80 is this port really open? Well, Nmap doesn't know because it just got to reset back. It doesn't know where it got the reset back from, whether it's a firewall or if the port is maybe open for certain things and it just says you're not allowed. It could be a multiple of things, but it's something to go look at, right? But we also have this additional information in here. We don't care about the O scan we don't care about that O scan and then uh, remember at the beginning of the text document I said are you smart enough to use this tool that's what that line is oh well, we don't want that line either so now to to trim what we already have is pretty simple um, now one thing I did want to point out before we head that way is if we go back to uh, get tech help select string All right so you may need to know what line number some of these are on and to get that if you were to come back up here let's do a full tack full right and we kind of scroll through here and these are all examples toward the bottom but somewhere in the middle of this help file are the different parameters you have your common parameter, simple match, and they're done alphabetically. So we can come in here and we see that the pattern, um, here's one way to tell if it's required, is if you actually do the full and you look at the patterns, the required will tell you true, yes, it is definitely required. However, we also have this path, it's a system string, it specifies the path to the file to search. Law cards are permitted. Hmm, what does that mean? That means if you've got a whole directory full of Nmap scans, in our case, uh, we could actually do uh, point the select string to a directory and read in all the text files and then do our pattern matching, right? So we really don't need the get content uh, commandlet. So if we do uh, select string and then we do that and then we do a star for wildcard dot txt pattern right uh, and then we said we're doing a warning colon and uh, there we go close that out 
we didn't get anything. Hmm. Let's do figure out why. Let's, let's work through this. Select string. Let's do uh, star dot txt. I do know we can do dot forward slash and map pattern warning colon close that might help if I spell warning right warning there we go so now that that's working let's see if we can back this off to a star there we go I don't know what I was doing wrong but uh, that's how you do it so now we can actually point our select string to a whole directory full of text documents or nmap outputs um, and and look for any of the warnings now right now we've just got the one and we want to filter we want to take out those other lines so if we hit our up arrow key let's pipe that to another select string and we can do a pattern because remember pattern is mandatory the path was not so we could do uh, select pattern and then this time we only want the the resets right so we're looking for RSTs and there we go that's our that's all there is to it uh, to just pull basic information out however um, I like to go a step further I kind of like my stuff a little neat and organized so we could actually group uh, some of these together. So if you're used to uh, the Linux command line, you know, you can uh, unique these and kind of put them together. Well, in PowerShell, we're going to not unique them. We're kind of going to unique them, but we're actually just going to group them. So what command can we use to group things? Well, let's find out. Get tech command. We want star group star. And there we go. So we have an alias of group, which actually points to group object. And we have a command line called group object. And if we just ignore all the underlining OS applications, we've only, we're only left with one option, really. Uh, because our alias actually points to the one command line that we have. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this command and then we're gonna group tech object and then say hit enter and then okay so we didn't give it we didn't tell it what to group by so we, we're gonna want to group it by the name so let's do that let's do name if we hit enter that didn't give me the results I was looking for so let's do group hmm all right so I had to go back and take a look at my notes um, so I what we didn't talk about was um, I know I'm not getting the results I want so if we do uh, let me go ahead and just clear this if we take out the group so when we have started parsing this document we've actually changed it it's not a string anymore and if we do uh, get member we will see that is actually not a string it's actually turned into a match info object so when we go to start grouping on uh, various things we can group on any one of these properties so the problem was the only thing it was showing me was the name what other parameters was it showing it showed me a couple of other things that whenever you group by those, it is uh, just one object. So if we were if we were to take our command and we were to put it into a variable, so let's do uh, dollar sign my data, or actually let's do this because working with variables is a little bit easier than uh, messing with these whole command lines. So we're going to do dollar my data. So now if we do dollar my data is kind of what we're looking for. All right. So that that's the same as 
uh, doing this dollar my data see they're exactly the same so working with my data is going to be much simpler and if we do my data and pipe that to uh, get member here's where we're back so what I want to test is what does my data dot uh, line give me okay so line gives me uh, th the lines that I'm looking for what does uh, line number give me it gives me what line numbers that our matches are on so inside the document line 249 um, matches has a match line 250 has a match uh, 1430 has a match all right so that's what that gives me um, pull that back up what does matches give me all right so it looks like that's just kind of a list of um, matches so remember we were matching on warning which is right here all right let's see what does um, path give me so this is how you kind of go through and discover uh, discover what you're looking for um, so the the paths are you know where my text document is uh, pattern all right so that was my first match pattern right so if I want to group if I want to group my items let's uh, we could group them on let's group them by the line look at that that's actually what I was looking for so what we did is each one of these lines so this line it does not count it does not count the end map uh, it does not count the file name and the line number of where the match came from what it does is it just matches the line from within the text right here and as you can see these three lines are exactly the same these three lines are exactly the same and that's what's saying that's what's being mentioned right here so if we were to just do the same thing and pipe that to select which is actually select object uh, and we let's say we only want the count and the name it comes out much prettier so we have three warnings of the reset coming from this one IP address uh, for this port and then this IP address is sending resets on this port so that's how you can kind of start manipulating your data and start pulling information out and as you can see we only really used three commands um, even whenever I got in trouble and started not getting the results I wanted I referred back to uh, those three commands get help get member and get type or get help get member and get command not get type because uh, that's what get member does is it gets you the type of data you're looking at so next so that's a simple parsing so the gentleman earlier this week what he wanted if we kind of look at this text document again what he was asking is basically if we grab port 22 if we grab port SSH if SSH was listed he wanted to grab a line that was several lines above it so for us what we're going to do is we're going to grab this nmap scan report uh, line based on whether SSH was scanned or not uh, and so let's so in doing that we're going to see that it's one so here's here's the line we want here's line one two three four five and then six so we want the sixth line up based out of this report um, and we can test it again if we kind of look at this one we see port 22 here so we do 20 so that's one two three four five six uh, let's check the next one one two three four five six Hang on. I miss counting start here so that's one that's two three four five 
six. All right, so it looks like the line we really want is six lines above the uh, the port 22 SSH port. So that's what we're going to work with. Get this out of the way. All right, let's just do that. Okay. So we're going to use a lot of the same uh, commands that we already used. We already know that we're going to um, select. We're not going to use my data. So we're going to create a new a new variable. But what we're going to do is just do... So let's start here. But instead of warning, we're looking for 22 TCP. Right? We hit enter. There we go. But as you can see, this only gives us the one line. Remember, we want to grab the line that's six lines above this one. So if we go back to get help, and we're going to do a select string. Now, here's a little trick I like to use uh, when I'm on the command line. If I just hit dash, and I hit control space bar, shifts, uh-oh, a little trick's not working. Um, if we just hit tab tab, that should, yeah, there we go. Tab, tab. Uh, it kind of gives us uh, a hint. Uh, I love IntelliSense. It gives us a hint on the different parameters that we could be using at this given moment. So we've already, we already know the path one. Uh, we're going to point that to our file. We already know, oh, the, I forgot. We're in Git help. So Git help, we could give it a path to uh, maybe a, uh, a script that somebody else gave us uh, so that it'll read the help file within there. Um, this is the one I really want to point out. We could do a dash parameter. So instead of doing a, a detail or a full where you get the synopsis at the beginning and then you get all the examples at the bottom, we can just grab that centerpiece with all the parameters. So let's do that parameter. Now, if we hit enter right here, it's going to give us an error saying that's missing an argument. So if you know what parameter you want and you just kind of want to do some research, you can give it that parameter. But we can also give it a wildcard of all, and it gives us everything. So if we kind of start scrolling through here, we'll see, um, kind of just start reading through here, uh, seeing if there's anything in here that would... Uh, kind of lead you to the results that you're looking for so as we're scrolling up I'm kind of going fast because I already know what we're looking for and we're getting close and we have this context thing and it takes it takes an integer and see and it captures the specific or the specified number of lines before and after the line that matches this pattern that sounds like exactly what we want because we want we're grabbing the port 22 line, and we want to grab the 6 line above it. So within that 6 line context is what we want. So, and if you're used to uh, bash, uh, you know whenever you're using grep, you've got that uh, the, the dash B for before and dash A after and the dash C, you know, within. It's kind of is exactly what this does. It takes one to two numbers, and it kind of, this next paragraph tells you that. So, if you use the dash context, if you only use one number, it gives you, like if you were to use two here, it'll give you two lines before and two lines after. Well, in our case, we don't care about the after. We only care about the before. So, you have to give it two numbers. And if you give it two numbers, the first number is how many lines before, the second number is how many lines after. So what we're going to do is we're going to do dash context 6 comma 0. So let's do that. So we're going to get, go back to our command. And we're going to use context 6 comma 0. If we hit enter, there we go. Let's go ahead and take this bottom one. So it matched on, here, let me try to scroll that up for you guys. So it matched on this line right here. 
that's what we wanted. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, that's the line we wanted right there. So now let's just say we want to pull only those lines out of what we have. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and put what we have into a variable. That way it's easier to work with. So we'll hit up and then we will call these our dollar sign uh, SSH ports, right? Hit equals. So now we have dollar SSH ports. There we go. So it's the same thing. So now, whenever you first get data, even though I failed to show you this uh, right after the right after the fact of uh, the last time on the last example this time what we're going to do is the first thing is we're going to get member because we want to know what type of data we are working with again we're working with that match info interesting and it has this context property if we go back and if we go to um, if we go to google and we do uh, match info PowerShell or let's do uh, I always I always like to start with uh, PowerShell match info object look at that and the first one we get is docs.microsoft.com we click on this there's a lot of information in here that I really don't understand I am NOT a developer I'm a scripter so as I kind of go through here I kind of read what these properties are and the first one that catches my mind is the context. The context for the match or null if dash context was not specified. So what that means is, or what I have come to find out what that means is that first example we used when we did not use uh, context, we would not be able to do anything with, with this property. However, since in this current example with the SSH port, we did use the context, we can do something with this particular property. And since the line we want is within the context of what we were searching for, that's the property we're going to need to use. So the next thing I kind of like to uh, do is this is a command you don't have to memorize, but I highly suggest it. Uh, because it comes in handy I like to uh, measure my objects um, and, and the reason is is when we looked at um, the match info object it didn't really say whether it was similar to a, a string or a list or um, an array or anything like that so I don't know if this match object is just a, a one thing or is it a group of things? So when I measure the object, I see that there's 26 items in there. So that also tells me that I can, instead of seeing that whole list of uh, things like this, what we can do is we can grab the first item that is in there. Since I know there's multiple items, I can just grab the one so I can kind of see what each object really looks like when we output that. So now we're messing with objects and we're messing with the match info object. So the next logical thing would be what can we do with it? Well, uh, we may want to select something within the object. So uh, get tag command star object what can I do with objects oh I hit tab and I've got compare object for each object we've measured an object uh, we've grouped objects uh, we can create new objects uh, what I'm really looking for it looks like select object so now that we've got that command we'll get help select object and as you can see um, it takes a property of a system object we can exclude stuff just kind of read through here kind of see what's going on 
this is actually going to come in handy here in just a moment. All right, so clear, uh, let me clear the screen. We're going to take our dollar sign, my data, right? Is that what we're working with? No, SSH ports. That's what we're working with. Whew, forgot what I was doing. All right, and we want to select object, and it just selected it all. So let's, uh, so to figure out what we really want to do, we're going to get member again. And we're going to select object. Let's, let's grab the context. And that's what we're left with. All right, so let's figure out what we're working with. So we're going to pipe that to get member. And it's still a match info. So there is something in this match context. L. So, so what we can do... Since if we suspect that there's something in there, we can do uh, tack. We can use that parameter expand property, and then context. And as you can see, it opens up that context property for us, and we can actually kind of peek inside there. And now we have this pretext property, and we can see this. Other than actually seeing it on the screen, we could uh, pipe what we currently have to uh, get member. And we will see that now we're still we're working with the property of match info context, which has a post context and a pre context. And as you can see that it's in brackets, that means you can open it up. Right? It's going to be a list or an array of things. Um, let's go back and I'm kind of curious to see if that one had it as well. It doesn't really, oh, it tells you that it's a match info context. So if we copy that, we come back over here to our Google PowerShell uh, Control V match info context object. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's match info. That's not what I meant. Okay, it's a class. So what does this mean? So it, so you have to open it up to get to these properties. That's what I'm reading here. So that's how I knew we had to use the expand property. Or, yeah, expand property to open that up. So we did that. We did that. So now, let's look at that again. So now we want to, uh, we're going to select object, expand property. Remember, we wanted to uh, open up that uh, pre-context because it had data in it. So now if we look at it, now look at what we have. It kind of looks similar to what we were just seeing a minute ago. But now if we, uh, well, let me clear the screen. If we pipe that one to uh, get member, would you look at this? This is not what we've been seeing lately, but we have seen this before. If you remember correctly, we saw this way back when we first did get content or select string, which what we have now is... A string so now that we have now that we have the stuff that's in the pre-context and it's converted to a string what we can do uh, clear the screen uh, use a uh, select string and if we remember correctly what we're looking for we come back and look at our example data file what, what we wanted was this line right here so we could do a path of maybe nmap because nothing else begins with nmap except for the line that we want right so let's uh move that off to the side we're going to do a pattern match and now if we hit that there it is that's what we're looking for we just wanted that first line of anything that's in our report that had ssh scanned for now, where do you go from here? Well, you could have uh, done some other manipulations on only grabbing the SSH ports that were opened and then uh, displaying the, the names of the machines or IP addresses. Uh, there's all kinds of other things you could have done. It's just that this specific uh, technique was used to help solve a gentleman's problem that I helped earlier this week. His specific problem was, I've got this text document. It says this on line three, but what I really need is if 
if it says this on line three, I need the line number one, right? And so, and so that's that's this is how we solved his problem. Uh, and this is how you could also start using uh, PowerShell for data analytics, right? So now I know I've got these uh, these machines listed that have been scanned for port. 22 if i know i have 50 more machines that have not been scanned now i can you know pipe these to uh, text documents and maybe do a diff and maybe run another scan um, all kinds of things you can start doing from here but the real point of the video is to show you how to use the three basic commands right let me get there yeah three basic commands get help get member and get command to solve any of your problems with PowerShell. That's the basics of it. So with that being said, I do have some more videos lined up uh, to record. Uh, some of my friends have been uh, giving me ideas and things to uh, look forward to or to uh, that they wanted to see videos on. So hopefully you will too. So I highly suggest that you hit that subscribe button uh, so you can watch the next videos that come out um, and uh, if you like this video please give me a thumbs up because uh, at some point I'm going to get a benefit of actually having a customized URL for my yeah, YouTube channel which would be kind of nice um, and also if you have any uh, PowerShell related items that you would like to learn uh, any any command that may confuse you or anything, uh, feel free to reach out on Twitter. Uh, maybe leave me a note at the bottom here uh, and, and let me know what it is you want to learn. And I will, I will try and get that video uh, put out for you. Until then, uh, see you in my next video.